One day in 1987, an 18-year-old Patricia Arquette decided to get herself a sandwich and headed over to Cantor's Deli in Los Angeles. Little did she know, that decision would change the direction of her life forever. Nicolas Cage was there, and when he saw Patricia, he said he was going to marry her. So, she decided to send Nicholas on a quest to prove his love. Tear it all apart, but love me. At first, Patricia thought Nicholas was joking, but he wasn't. In fact, he was being totally serious about his declaration to the actress. Patricia politely declined his proposal, but when Nicholas persisted, she decided that in order for him to prove that he was serious about it, she sent him on a Princess Bride level quest. She wrote a list of impossible things to find and said that if Nicholas was able to gather everything on that list, she would give him her heart in return. One by one, they started coming to me, Arquette said of the gifts during an interview. Nicholas Cage bought a rare letter written by J.D. Salinger for $2,500 in order to fill Patricia Arquette's request for an autograph from the notoriously private author. The idea was we really didn't know each other, and he was like, I met him and Chris, uh, Crispin Glover in a restaurant, and Crispin said, I'm going to marry you, and Nick said, no, I'm going to marry you. And Nick said, give me a list of 10 things, like a quest, and I'll get all these things, and then you'll marry me. After Cage dropped it off at her house, the actress started to panic. She had no idea that he was going to take the list seriously. Patricia then called him and asked him to stop and that it was all a funny joke. But Cage was determined. He knew what he wanted and he was going to get it. I just, it it's great. It's just great for my mood and it's great for everything else. Our cat's list also included a black orchid, which we might add is extremely rare. A Lisa Tribe wedding costume and a Bob's Big Boy statue. One day, Cage arrived at Arquette's place with a purple orchid and a can of black spray paint. Arquette watched as he spray-painted the orchid black, presented it to her, and then sped off on his motorcycle. Cage said he had a chainsaw ready and was prepared to steal a Bob's Big Boy statue for her, and Patricia finally gave in. While she said she wouldn't marry him, she agreed to go away with him to Cuba for three weeks on a romantic getaway. Unfortunately, just before they were supposed to leave for Cuba, they were stalled in Mexico due to an issue with their tickets. Cage lost his temper and threw a fit at the airport due to the inconvenience. Patricia was not impressed with his meltdown and decided that it was best for them to part ways instead. Please, sir, if you don't get back on- Then what? I'll be arrested? Put in airport jail? Just get your ticket and move on, okay? Get your goddamn ticket and move on! His success was scary to me. I couldn't touch him, the actress confessed. Over the next few years, they both moved on to date different people. Nicholas had a son with his then-girlfriend Christina Fulton, and Patricia also had a son with her then-boyfriend Paul Rossi. And then one day in 1995, their paths crossed once again at the very same place. Yep, that's right, they bumped into each other at the same deli where they'd first met. If that isn't romantic, we don't know what is. I needed to be reassured that the depth of his love would be as brave as before, Arquette explained in an interview about their chance meetup almost 10 years after. And it seems the depth of his love was proven, because just two weeks later they got married and it was Patricia that proposed. She arrived at his house dressed head to toe in black vinyl, carrying a big purple wedding cake and asked him to marry her. And then many years went by, we were friendly, and then I called him and said, okay, I'm ready to get married. It was at that very moment that Nicholas thought, I was with the right woman. For their wedding, Arquette swapped her black vinyl for a leopard print jacket and married Cage during a 10 minute ceremony on top of a cliff in Carmel. It seems that their wedding bliss didn't last very long. Sadly, after just nine months of marriage, the couple separated. There were times we weren't living together because we were fighting, but it wasn't as reported and I didn't feel that I needed to explain that," Arquette shared. She explained that while her mom was dying from breast cancer, she went to live with her. Patricia was taking care of her sick mom and needed to spend whatever time with her that she had left. There were also times when Nicholas was working on a film, so he had to be away from home too. So with everything going on in their personal and work lives, they didn't get to see much of each other. I still don't feel like I owe it to anyone. It's funny when people are so wrong and they put you in this position and decide who you are," the actress said. After their divorce, Patricia welcomed daughter Harlow with actor Thomas Jane in 2003. They wed three years later and Arquette filed for divorce in early 2009. She's been linked to painter Eric White since 2014. Nicholas, on the other hand, had a bit more of a bumpy ride to finding love. Soon after splitting from Arquette, he began dating Lisa Mary Presley, and they got married in 2002. In an interview, Cage said there was a sense, a logic, to marrying the singer-songwriter, given they both came from famous and artistic families. 
Oftentimes, when you have two people who are very strong and their own personalities and rather intense, sometimes you can have a hard time meshing. We got into this unfortunate pattern of breaking up and getting back together again. Unfortunately, they filed for divorce after only four months of marriage. Nicholas admitted that he continues to miss Lisa every day, and he wished that they hadn't rushed into the marriage and regretted that they went on to rush into the divorce. In 2004, he married Alice Kim. They welcomed their son, Kalel, the following year. We did it because we loved each other, Cage stated. It seems that Kim brought out the best of Nicholas, and he credited his stable lifestyle to her. In my own life, I have a legitimate level of concern because if you love your kids, you're gonna worry, but I hope I'm not like Grug. Do you think I'm like Grug? Uh, not quite, but he's a protective dad for sure. The couple was together for 14 years until Kim suddenly filed for divorce, which broke the actor's heart. It was a shocker for me. I definitely didn't see it coming, and those feelings had to go somewhere, so they went into the performance. The actor remained tight-lipped about what led to the couple's split, but said that they've remained on good terms to co-parent their son. But his marriages didn't stop there. In 2019, the actor had one of his shortest marriages yet with Erica Kowicki. It was a whirlwind romance which resulted in a spur-of-the-moment wedding in Vegas. Just four days after marrying, the actor filed for an annulment. The couple had been together for a year before they decided to get married. Unfortunately, everything seemed to go downhill from there. I was pretty upset about that and the way things happened. He also confessed that when he woke up the next morning, he had no idea he was married. However, Erica was allegedly against the idea of the divorce and denied all of Cage's claims that they were intoxicated when they decided to get married. Following the divorce proceedings, Cage's fourth wife then continued to demand spousal support from the actor even though they were only married for four days. However, it's his most recent marriage that seems to be the one that's sticking. In 2021, Nicholas married Rico Shibata. Cage told his brother that they had spent almost six months apart due to the international pandemic. It seems like distance does make the heart grow fonder because Cage made the decision to propose to Rico over FaceTime. I'm a romantic. I want to get on one knee and, and offer the black diamond ring, but I did it on FaceTime because I couldn't see her because of the quarantine issues. He admitted, I got her a black diamond engagement ring. Her favorite color is black, so she wanted to get black gold and black diamond. I customized and personalized it, and I actually sent it to her via FedEx. Close friends to the actor said in a statement that the pair are very happy after they tied the knot in Las Vegas in February. It was a gorgeous affair followed by a celebration that was attended by Nicholas's ex-wife, Alice Kim. While we can't help but swoon over his romance with Patricia, sometimes the big gestures don't always mean a happily ever after. Their story is undoubtedly an epic one and will go down in the books of ultimate Hollywood love stories, but it wasn't one built to last. Thankfully, they both moved on, although it took Nicholas several tries to finally find the woman to make him happy. But who doesn't have to kiss a few frogs before finding their prince, or in this case, princess? We just hope that they're both happy.